Hey everyone, it's Dylan from I Don't Know Reviews coming at you. Happy New Year. We are now in 2018. 2017 is, is way that way. And I am here to provide my top 10 movies of 2017. And before I do that, let me just say, in case anything looks a little off, got some new equipment, some new things. So if anything's not working or looking right, I'm still working my way through it, so don't mind that. But let's just start off things with a couple of honorable mentions. I will say that some of these I have not reviewed on the channel, and anything I have reviewed, I will put a link somewhere. But I'm gonna start with Call Me By Your Name, Wonder Woman, and Coco. Those are my honorable mentions. Quick, easy, to the point, let's get to the big guns. Now before I get into the big list, um, these are all subjective. These aren't just the my end all be all like these are the best movies in this specific order. I'm just labeling my top 10 favorites, just personal favorites. So take that with a grain of salt. You know, everyone's gonna be different. Everyone's gonna have different opinions. So my number 10, if you can't see behind me, is Blade Runner 2049. Now, I wasn't going into this expecting much, but I was pleasantly surprised. Fantastic effects, great production design, some good performances from Harrison Ford, Ryan Gosling, all around, very well made. Maybe better than the original, because the original wasn't my big cup of tea, but not saying it's bad. Even with it being a bit of a slog, the visuals alone, and what Denis Villeneuve, v v <laughs> what he accomplished is fantastic. And I can't imagine anyone else particularly making this movie. And that's why Blade Runner 2049 is my number 10. And for my number 9 spot is War for the Planet of the Apes. War for the Planet of the Apes I was super hyped about. And I'm happy to say that this was a great tail end to a fantastic trilogy. Which you never get to say anymore. The story of Caesar itself is such an interesting one. Caesar himself played by the great Andy Serkis. He's just such an interesting character. And following him through these three movies and finally getting a conclusion to his story and hopefully, hopefully the, the ending of this series. At heart, it had a, it had emotion, it had action. It, the, fan, the, the, the ape effects were amazing still. Sure, some people think the title is a little misleading, but needless to say, I think War for the Planet of the Apes is very deserving of my number nine spot. And for my number eight, guys, it's a mini review because I didn't review this on the channel. <laughs> that is The Shape of Water. I literally just saw it a couple hours ago. <laughs> this is kind of a tentative one. This one could totally change in a week. It could literally change tomorrow, but my raw gut reactions, I really liked this one. Probably Del Toro's best work in a couple years, considering his past couple movies haven't been the best. I like Pacific Rim, but I will admit it is not the best movie in the world. God damn it, this this dude can make anything work. He makes a love story between a woman and a fucking fish work. He makes it work, and he makes it work very well. I totally bought into this woman and this fish guy falling in love with each other, which, I mean, he can't even talk. He just like roars and like makes weird sounds. And I'm like, yeah, that fish is really in love with her. <laughs> Overall, it's a very moving story. I really liked it a lot. Of course, with Del Toro, the production design, no matter if the movie's garbage or not, is still fantastic. And Sally Hawkins gives a fantastic performance as the lead. And of course, all those reasons, upon many more, but we would be here for a while if I kept talking, is why Shape of Water is my number eight. And at number seven is... <laughs> The Disaster Artist. Man, was I pumped to see this thing because I love the room. And I'm I just started reading the book. It's literally right over there. But I love this story. It's so wild. And I'm so happy that some goofball decided to make a movie about it. So let's thank James Franco and all the dudes at A24 for even letting this happen. As I said in my review, this could have so easily just been a mock piece. I was like, let's just tear apart Tommy with all the dumb crap he did on set. But no, they make it a very real, a very sympathetic story about a guy who just wants to make it in Hollywood even though he's not good. That's super admirable and that's a really uplifting story. Sure, it's funny. They point out some really weird and great stuff that many people have thought. Do not have to know anything about The Room before seeing this movie. It stands up on its own two legs, not to mention James Franco's performance as Tommy Wiseau, and it is one of the best movies of the year, and that is why it's my number seven. And at my number six is Thor Ragnarok. I was just, I'm just as surprised as a lot of people. I thought Thor Ragnarok was gonna be good. I didn't think it was gonna be as good as it was. And specifically, 
just throwing the other two Marvel movies that came out this year away. Like it's Spider-Man Homecoming and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I almost completely forgot about those. Thor, though, God, was this movie fun. Thor Ragnarok was just a blast from start to finish. It had the laughs. Taika Waititi did a fantastic job directing this thing. He really put his brand of comedy into a Marvel movie, and that's what this movie really is. It's a comedy. The action's fun. The characters are great, you know. Tom Hiddleston back as Loki. Chris Hemsworth back as Thor in top form, and I wouldn't have it any other way. This is just a blast, and I had so much fun with this goofball action comedy. You know, you think Marvel will be running out of steam at this point, but God, they are not, and that is why Thor is my number six. And my number five is Get Out. Why did I not see this before? I'm telling you guys, when I saw this movie, I, I, I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, yes, I'm a little way to the Get Out bandwagon, but goddamn, this is such a well-crafted movie by Jordan Peele. So meticulous, so many layers, so many little things you pick up on as you watch it and watch it over and over again, which I have done. Although many consider this a horror, I think it's more of a thriller kind of thing with horror elements. Also, this is just an important movie, especially in our time and our climate. I know everyone has freaking said that, but it really is. And it handles this issue subtly, but you still get it. You watch it, you get it, but it's not bashing you over the head with its ideas. And I can really appreciate that. Very suspenseful, great performances, and that is why Get Out is my number five of the year. Now, if you told me in the beginning of the year that it would be anywhere near my top ten list, I'd be like, come on, what are you crazy? Come on, it's, it's a scary clown movie. No. <laughs> it is fantastic, and that is why it's my number four pick for 2017. It is a great horror film but it's not just a great horror film it's a great coming of age film it's a, it's it's so good at what it does sure it may not hold up as well on rewatchability because you know it's gonna happen so it's not gonna scare you as much but god damn it bill skarsgård as the clown is, is is horrific in the best way possible he plays this thing disturbingly creepy not to mention all the kids are fantastic they work so well together, even the supporting characters. This movie is just so well made for a horror movie, of all things. And I could not be more excited for Chapter 2 when it comes out. And that is why it is my number four of the year. Now talk about a movie that has grown on me a lot over time. Baby Driver is my number three pick of the year. When I watched it, I liked it, but I didn't love it. Over time, as I've watched it more, I've, I've just grown to love it. And... It is such an exciting, oh god, I don't even know how to describe this movie. It's a comedy, it's a car chase movie, it's a crime thriller. It's so many different things and Edgar Wright just weaves it together so perfectly as he always does in his movies. This is a very well shot, methodical, well not methodical, methodically made movie. There's so much that goes into it, the performances, Ansel Elgort, Kevin Spacey, say what you will, but he was great in this movie. <laughs> John Hamm, Jamie Foxx, the whole cast is spectacular. It's a fun ride with a lot of heart. The romance works. The action works. Everything about this movie works. The editing is on point, but it's an Edgar Wright movie, so what else are you going to expect? And that is why Baby Driver is my number three pick of the year. And my number two pick, three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. I saw this about a couple weeks ago. God damn, was it good. This was such a well-crafted drama. Oh, let me rephrase, black comedy, because this movie was very funny, it was very dark, but it was unrelenting in what it had to say. This is such a well-crafted story with sharp freaking writing. This is some of the best writing I've seen all year, and some fantastic performances from all of the cast, especially all the leads. There are too many people I could gush about in this movie. It was just so unpredictable and flowed so well. The only problem I have with it is that the ending kind of was like, it kind of gave us like a triple ending. It's like, oh, it's ending now. Oh, no, it's not. It's ending now. No, it's not. But other than that, I loved Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. I thought it was one of the best of the year. And that, obviously, is why it's my number two pick of the year. And for those of you who watch, there's a movie earlier in the year that I loved, and that is Logan. And of course, it's my number one of the year. This thing came out in March, and goddamn, it left some freaking impact. As soon as I saw it, I loved this movie. This is such a dark, gritty, in a good way, telling of a character we've known for 17 years, and this is a perfect send-off. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, the best he's ever been, and it's such a great, 
story. There's a lot of heart. It's a smaller scale story. It makes it better for me. Every superhero movie doesn't have to be this grandiose tale where the world's gonna end and people are fighting armies. It's just a guy trying to save a girl with an old guy. It's so well made. James Mangold did a fantastic job. Considering how the Wolverine panned out, which, you know, it was good, but it wasn't great. But considering that, this is almost a masterpiece. This is my favorite movie of the year. It's kind of been like that for the whole year, but I've been waiting for something to dethrone it. And there have been a couple close ones. The action is great. Acting is great. The story is fantastic. The writing is off the charts. And this is such a great end for the character of Wolverine. And that is why it's my number one spot. So yeah, guys, that is my list. 2017 is done. I hope 2018 is going to bring many more great movies that I'm going to love and watch a billion freaking times. So yeah, tell me what you guys thought down in the comments below. Do you agree with my picks? Do you have other picks? Do you have things that you do, that you would swap around? Things like that. I love talking about these kinds of things. What someone liked, what someone didn't like, etc. If you like this video, you can like it right down there. You can also subscribe to my channel if you like this video and you want to see what I got going on in 2018 and the movies that I'm going to be seeing in 2018. Hopefully more than I saw this year. So yeah, guys, I hope you liked what you saw and I will see you guys next time.